Hey everyone, and welcome to part three of this sketchbook tour. If you haven't seen part one or two, please make sure you go check those out because they do give a little bit of an insight on why I broke this into three parts and what's going on to make me want to do this sketchbook tour to begin with. So those two videos are linked in the description below, so please make sure you go check that out. There's some pretty good drawings in there as well. I would very much encourage you to go see those. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, now this is another bassum. So this was day 17, the prompt was ornament. This is a bassum in the ZBrush project that I did that I actually made a bassum in. I 3D sculpted a bassum, added like fur and things like that. And that was actually really fun to learn how to do the wings in ZBrush because I've never used ZBrush before. So that was quite the experience. I decided to have him come back because in that ZBrush illustration, or not illustration, um, sculpt, I had him stealing or putting treasure in a treasure chest. So I had a treasure chest here and he had some coins in his mouth and it was kind of unclear if he was taking it like stealing from the treasure chest or putting it in there to collect it. It was kind of up in the air, up to your interpretation. So this is kind of the same way. And so I, was, I was feeling pretty Halloween inspired, fall inspired. So I was like, oh, what if he's stealing or she's stealing a pretty necklace from a pumpkin or putting it there? I don't know, but he's, he's I don't know. She seems very sneaky, I guess you could say. <laughs> I enjoyed bringing this one back for this drawing. I, I think it was a lot of fun. I like some of the texturing I did here and here. I really think I got that possum, possum face. All right, there, the nose is just so, I don't know. I've grown to love possum. All right, so we've got another gorilla in here on day 18, Misfit. <laughs> uh, I love him. So <laughs> he's a, a gorilla lion. So he's got the gorilla kind of proportions here. I was kind of upset his feet got cut off. So but yeah, those are his gorilla feet. Got a lion face, lion mane, very not fitting in his clothing here. Originally, I just had the shirt on, so he, but then he looked really, you know, Winnie the Pooey here, and, uh, you know, in, with the bear type, you know, lion ears that I had here, I was like, eh, he's looking a little bit too Winnie the Pooh. Not that that's bad, I love Winnie the Pooh, don't get me wrong, but uh, I figured I'd add the extra misfitting shorts here. <laughs> <laughs> to kind of remedy that a little bit. I think he's still cute. He's he still think he's still pretty full of himself, I think. He's like, yeah, I'm I'm freaking rocking this outfit here. Like what what do you want from me? Like come at me, I dare you. <laughs> so he's a fun character I made. And then this is day 19 sling. I wasn't feeling super creative, so I figured I'd just take it literally and be like, oh, let's just put this hybrid in a sling. And I don't really know what made me come up with a lemur ram, which is, you know, ring-tailed lemur and a ram. So this is just a hybrid I came up with, I think out of the blue. I don't think I really had any inspiration as far as what animal to put in a sling, but maybe it was because monkeys use their arms a lot, so this would kind of be hard for him to get around and things. And the ram, I don't know, a lot of these I just started drawing one animal and then exaggerated a part of it, and I was like, oh, that, what if I added horns instead of, you know, big ears like they have? Or something come up with hybrids in that way it's not always inspired by a specific fact or prompt I guess in this case but sometimes it's just visual similarities that get me inspired to create this hybrid he's looking real sad kind of grumpy in a way but I would be too you know no one wants to have a broken arm kind of like how I handled this it's very scribbly and loose but I think it's effective for what it is um I don't remember what the prompt was for this one I feel like it was track or tracks I feel like that would have had to been it because I remember specifically I was trying to figure out how to draw tire tracks and I was looking up tracks in general to kind of get inspired and I didn't want to just do animal tracks because I feel like that's ugh. I decided to take a little bit step further just to challenge myself get more creative because I can so I decided to make tracks like tire tracks and this kind of really wonky not in perspective slitting in the mud slash road here and this raccoon slash squirrel is just that close from dying <laughs> so it's a little sad but I, I figured I'd add that little cartoon element like gritting his teeth shaking I tried to add that little you know the oh my god texture in his fur there very loosey-goosey I mean I think this took me maybe 20 minutes maybe less <laughs> um, I don't really remember I couldn't tell you but I didn't spend that much time really trying to 
do everything perfect for really any of these or anything in my sketchbook in general. Most common rodent that I see on the road, uh, raccoons and sometimes squirrels. So I made it this time, so that's, that's nice. I was brainstorming with my dad and I was like, oh, so the prompt is track today. He's like, you should just draw like a track and then an animal and then pancake of that animal and the rest of the animal f like off the top of that track. Like that's just so morbid. I don't want to take it that far. So I figured I'd just make this guy just barely make it. So good job, buddy. All right, so this drawing is a preliminary sketch for another life drawing self-portrait that I had to do for my life drawing class. This was kind of like a brainstorming. I wanted to do mostly a portrait and the idea behind it was shadow. It had to show some kind of uh, conflicting shadow and reality type prompt there so I thought I'd make myself or some girl it really didn't have to be a self-portrait but I figure since I have my face I might as well use it I tried to loosely get a girl here with rabbit ears and a hawk shadow so and here's some notes that I was thinking either either having a gradient or a gradient this way like a radial gradient it was kind of like basically to show my professor again like this is what I'm thinking for her to give me some feedback and stuff so I was thinking about mostly leaning toward doing a vertical which I did end up doing or a horizontal. I feel like the vertical is just more striking and I could add more space up here a little bit. I really am proud of that chalk pastel drawing that I did. This was the the humble beginnings for that drawing. I had to bring this guy back um, but this time I made a mama and her babies and I realized after the fact because I had a reference of mostly because when possums have their young they usually have them on their back while they travel around so that you know you don't lose any little ones on your travels to wherever. But I had a reference photo of a possum with her babies on her back and I, I drew in their little paws here, which they're so cute by the way, they're like little fingers. So weird. So I drew those in there not realizing that when they grow up to be a bassum, they won't have little pawsies like that. I still think they're cute. I, I don't regret it. <laughs> That's just something I noticed. I was like, wait a minute. I don't remember what the prompt was for this one. I feel like it was treasured. I forget what day it was. I don't remember, but I think the prompt was treasured. And I remember for this one, I was like, oh, I'll just draw my, my bassum again, stealing treasure like I did for the other one. And my ZBrush drawings, so, but I figured I want to take it a little step further, kind of challenge my creativity here. So I decided to make this Bassum because I love him, but also make it more wholesome in a way that, you know, she treasures her little Bassum babies. And uh, so she's got the little smile. She's still got the, you know, possum face with the beady eyes and the teeth and everything, but she's got that nice curl of her smile and cute little babies here. I don't know. I feel like it was more wholesome, like treasured in a conceptual way instead of treasured like the blooms treasure or anything like that. So yeah, so this is this was my twist for that one. I, I really enjoyed it. I think I think they're really cute. This one I think the prompt was ghost, maybe? I think the main inspiration was trying to figure out animals that look ghosty. So I thought a lot about Maltese's and how they basically look like ghosts with the eyes cut out of a sheet type shape. Especially when they get their hair cut and they're like in dog shows and whatever. They look very cartoon ghosty. So, so that was one of them I definitely wanted to do. And the other one was jellyfish because I'm super inspired by jellyfish in general. I think the way that they're shaped also kind of reminds me of that like ghost shape. And the way that they move in the water is very like spiritual and wispy and very majestically flowy kind of. And I, I could watch them probably all day. It's very mesmerizing to watch them swim. It's, okay, I don't remember what day it was, but I think one of the prompts was ancient and this must have been it because I remember trying to think about animals that made me think of old, old ancient times. And obviously I thought about Anubis cause you know, ancient Egyptian. I don't know, that's where my brain went anyway. <laughs> so I drew Anubis, but I added a Triceratops body and Triceratops headdress thing that like Anubis, I don't know. But that was my brain bar for that day, I guess. Uh, I'm pretty happy with him. I think he's definitely got a, a unique design. So I think the prompt was Dizzy, if I remember correctly, because uh, obviously he's pretty dizzy. <laughs> So I actually, I'm pretty happy with the expression I got on this guy. He is obviously not having a very good time. He was actually one of the candidates I was gonna put in my bar illustration or like college party illustration for all these like party animal hybrids here. You know, I didn't end up going with that. So he, in the future he might pop up in an illustration just because I feel like when you think of college parties or house parties, there's always spin the bottle somewhere and 
chugging in another beer pong, you know, all that kind of crazy stuff that you see in movies. So I think he would be a fun addition to a scene in that way. So we'll see if he ever shows up in one of my illustrations. But I, I really like this sketch. I think I could have been obviously a little bit cleaner here and there, but again, Inktober for me was just trying to get in the habit of drawing every day, no matter the outcome, so. All right, so this is day 25, it must be, so. I obviously had to do a Benorse, and I tried to remember what the prompts, I think it was tasty, because I was trying to come up with an animal hybrid that would eat, be eating something tasty or something that would be super tasty to it, and piggybacking off of that bait day with the Benorse being baited by a carrot, because both horses and bunnies like carrots. I think it was, this was a cute experiment with his all, you know, he's very, he's having a good time. I wish the page was a little bit longer here so I could show those ears a little bit better, but I think she's cute. I was actually really rushed for this one on this Inktober day and I was very sloppy with the scribbling and I think I ended up screwing up so I tried to cover it with Sharpie. It was just very messy, so I was really not happy with how this turned out, but I saw a lot of potential in this idea. So that's what inspired me to come up with a more fully realized and uh, fleshed out illustration for this concept. Okay, so this drawing is a little cringy, but I'm trying to remember again. I don't I don't remember what the prompt was Maybe ice cream or a scoop maybe maybe scoops it's gonna bother me. But anyway, this is a polar bear walrus. A polaris or a waller bear. I don't know. He was in another Inktober that I did <laughs> and he likes ice cream like in my previous drawing of him, so he's so cringy. This proportion stuff is bugging me. And I remember I screwed up on the tongue. I added a little bit too much ink and I was trying to fix the shape here so you could tell I put some white gel pen on here because the texture is a little bit different. I don't know how well that shows on camera, but you know, he likes ice cream and um, sprinkles apparently. So I think this is two Inktober days in one. I want to say this one's ride. Uh, so I did a lemuram and a baby lemuram because that's, it, lemurs actually carry their young like this. So I thought it would be cute. His body is just so limp and adorable. It was a little bit challenging because I think in the reference photo I was using for the lemurs, his head was like resting more lower, but I wanted to see it because I was putting the lemur ram horns on him. So I, you know, it was a little bit challenging there, but again, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's really cute. And then this day is, I think it was like speared or pierced. Ooh, pierced. Yeah, it was pierced. Definitely pierced because I remember trying to come up with something that would be pierced or I was, I was thinking about drawing it an animal hybrid or something that had piercings maybe. I got very nostalgic and I was thinking about this picture book that I loved, loved, loved as a kid. It was one of my favorite picture books. I still have it. It's called Mary's Dream and it's about a unicorn who gets lost and finds a, an owl and breaks the owl free and the owl ends up helping her. Anyway, one of my favorite picture books as a kid. I remember one of the scenes in particular in that book is there was, there was a tree and the mom was helping her grab an apple from the tree and it fell and um, pierced on her horn. She's like, oh, that's so silly. And I remember it was, it was cute because the mom was licking the apple juices from her face. It was just a very cute moment in that story and I was inspired by it. That kind of triggered my memory for that so I decided to do a more adult version of that and you know unicorns to me are like hybrids like narwhal horses or something so I thought it was very fitting and even though I did I think I messed up a bunch so I was like ah, I'll just color it in black so it might look like blood it's not but you know you gotta do what you gotta do for Inktober here because ink obviously you can't erase it uh, and I didn't I don't know if I didn't have gel pen on me or didn't feel like it there you go now I'm really trying to remember <laughs> what this prompt was so definitely Inktober I know that I just I'm trying to come up with trying to remember what it was. It might have been paralyzed? I don't know. Maybe it was injured. So I figured I did a lot of animals in the past, animal hybrids, uh, like mermaid type animals, where I would do the head of whatever animal and then a fish tail of some kind. So I thought I'd flip it and have a dog that's injured, paralyzed in some way in this walker thing, for the uh, prosthetic thing for dogs that I saw. And uh, I decided to give him a fish head and some scales and a tadpole type tail bear. <laughs> I never really do fish faces. And this one I think is Catch. So this is <laughs> another Gorillion, Gorillion guy strutting. He feels like he's a catch. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was tempted to draw my seal lion guy, but uh, I feel like he takes the cake too. He's he's very, he's quite the catch if I do say so myself. So good on you, buddy. Oh yes, some Savannah monitor sketching. I was kind of trying to brainstorm some ideas for a the lizard that I was gonna include in my illustration that was inspired by one of these Inktober drawings. I think the prompt was darkness. So I wanted to kind of flesh them out a little bit more. So I definitely wanted to do a Savannah monitor because their tongues are like like really forked. The proportion of their tongue and the forkedness is very extreme, I think. So I decided to use this Savannah monitor. So yeah, this was just some basic sketching, trying to come up with the posing I wanted for that illustration. Different head angles and body angles and perspective and things like that. That was the brainstorming process for that. And here's some thumbnailing for this illustration. This one you can hardly see, it's very blurry. I think you can actually see it a little bit better on camera, but in person it's very blurry <laughs> with the graphite transfer. I think I was kind of coming up with the composition more here. Added the cricket shrimp. Um, I decided to add two of them still, but then I was trying to come up with where they would be in the water. I still kind of wanted to add those spikes that I had in that original Inktober drawing, but I don't, honestly, I don't remember, I don't really know why I didn't add them to the final illustration, but I think maybe I just figured it was less of a hybrid if I was adding stuff onto it for no reason, because Savannah monitors don't have spikes like that, and anglerfish don't really have them either. So I was drawing these and I actually really like this one, but it was a little bit awkward. I, I can see why I wanted to extend this down just because the cropping's off. And again, with this small sketchbook, it's a little bit more challenging to get more sketches on one page because they're just so small, but and I remember showing it to my professor and being like, okay, these are the two I'm kind of thinking about. She definitely said this one was stronger, which I totally agree with. But I was like, oh, this is a little awkward here with the, the cut off tail here. It's like a tangent right here. And then these are some notes I took after getting some feedback from her. She said the light floating towards the viewers kind of play with how they're going towards or going back into the water, having them go further in space a little bit. So I did try and fix that a little bit for this more refined sketch here. And I decided to add another one here. and. I I don't know, I feel like I feel like it adds to it. It kind of gives your eye a nice sweep around. For the final illustration for this, I was like, I'm really, I'm, I really am pretty proud of it. And I think I added a lot more than this sketch has. Like for example, I added a lot of the seaweed type plants and I added actually a water line here so you can see above and below the water and I added some grass in the background and rocks and things like that and I, th I really think I pulled it all together for this illustration I'm pretty proud of it so thank you Inktober for sparking that idea and getting me all excited and ex inspired to make this illustration so yeah I think this is my last yeah this is my last page the last page is just me trying to plan out the rest of the semester so I can get all my projects done on time and break them up so I don't go crazy and do everything in one day and procrastinate it really does help me get things done and not overstress about doing too much in one day. Thank you guys so much for watching part three of my sketchbook tour. If you've made it this far, you are a rock star. And comment below which one of these sketches were your favorite. All the supplies that I use in this sketchbook tour are linked in the description as well as part one and two. So I would highly recommend you check those out if you're interested. So as always, thank you guys so much for bearing with me and watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.